Transformation from Helen Finnegan. Yes. Three minutes, three, four slides, everybody, so, because I will be cutting, okay? So, so this project, we're going to leverage pattern languages uh, for sustainability <coughs> and social change. Uh, actually, the uh, sister, sustainability uh, and social change issues are of systemic nature. Uh, that's why uh, Loretta was saying earlier that uh, we all have a, a different definition of sustainability and social change. We each have a, our preferred cause. Uh, and uh, what we will be trying to do is connect the various uh, initiatives of sustainability and social change to their systemic operators, let's say, in order to connect together and to be able to uh, cross-pollinate different uh, solutions on the ground. Uh, because uh, we need to be able to uh, talk together and understand each other when we talk. So pattern Pattern languages actually are um, structured uh, formats of knowledge uh, that have started in architecture and have been used a lot in, in software uh, in order to uh, uh, connect together problems with solutions uh, and uh, create conversations about context, the forces that apply and what types of uh, patterns uh, are connected either in input or in output. Uh, but, and there's been very recently a new uh, initiative to um, bring pattern languages to societal change. So there's a conference that uh, is being born to, to, to do this. And so we will uh, do some research multidisciplinary to try and find uh, how these, uh, these languages and these problems can uh, connect, what are the overlaps, in order to create a knowledge base, a kind of a hybrid between a, a wiki and a github, so that uh, communities can bring their best practices uh, in formats that can be interoperable and can uh, fork uh, patterns and uh, modify them and uh, bring them back into a repository. Uh, and we will have both uh, non-digital and digital tools uh, to do that. Uh, I think... Uh, yeah, so we will, we will uh, bring together scientists of uh, complexity theory, systems theory, network theory, stigmology, to try and draw these systemic abstract level uh, dynamics and then have an empirical research uh, work uh, package where we will connect these systemic um, uh, dynamics to how they manifest and how they are uh, uh, Expressed and how we can find them in actual problems that people have to uh, fall on the ground. Uh, and uh, we, well, yes, we based on lots of communities, we will uh, bring together lots of communities to do that. And, uh, we're thinking of applications in uh, indexing blockchains and uh, algorithms and things like that. It's a bit complex. I hope you understood a little bit. Uh, and uh, if you want to ask me questions, I'll be somewhere later on. Thanks for that, Helen. So, <coughs> next we have to set up a sustainability area.
And hello, my name is Marcelo, and I work for a foundation in the South, uh, south uh, District of Madrid, Colusera, uh, which is, you see, located in the South, south part of, of Madrid. It's called Sustainable Neighborhood, uh, and we are, we will try to share with you some, some ideas and some aspects of a project we are already developing there in, in, this, in, in Usera, okay? Um, just three, three ideas of what we are uh, already, already doing. We see a situation where, it's, where um, we, uh, we detect that uh, the, the economic crisis has grown poverty, no jobs, school dropout, and uh, lack of motivation, despair, frustration. We work with um, three vocational educational training courses, uh, um, computing, administration, and electricity. Okay, and we see that um, we try to 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 make uh, young people uh, enroll in our courses, where we we try to to improve their um, their education, their skills. But we see that our uh, failure is that even when they got the the, the skills, they don't find. Any, any jobs. So we are we are developing uh, the, the the following intervention. We we chose uh, a building uh, in the in the district, okay, um, and we are uh, re um, reorienting. We are uh, transforming our um, our uh, education courses, our vocational educational courses into something which we uh, uh, think is um, uh, it's better for their um, for their um, uh, school to work transitions okay so our course on um, electricity we are just making that this is transformed into um, energy uh, um, sustainability okay uh, we uh, make our computing which is based on personal computing repair, we are uh, transforming, reorienting it to uh, the construction of free uh, hardware and, and, and open, open source software. And our gardening course, we are transforming into uh, the installation of green roofs. So we are trying to uh, transform our, our, our education courses into something which is socially useful and uh, uh, environmentally sustainable, uh, and, and we have a four um, a four specialization, which is photocatalytic photo paintings. Okay, so we are in, uh, we have some uh, 100 140 interventions. So um, we are trying to uh, transform the, the not only the possibilities of success of um, uh, students, which. Uh, who, are, who are studying in, in the neighborhood, but also we are trying to give an answer, an answer to uh, the societal challenges which are basically uh, an uh, environmental uh, sustainability. Okay, so, so that's uh, what, what we are trying to, to, to introduce, okay? So, here is the, the idea. So, that's what I wanted to share with you, the idea. So the idea is that uh, a collective awareness platform um, may, be, uh, may be interesting because we see a possibility to put in common that uh, knowledge, that uh, sensors, that people uh, into a, 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 the same um, collective um, platform. And we wanted, or we, the idea is mainly to uh, try to change the, the, the conditions of life of people in the neighborhood. So, then uh, try to connect those sensors we are installing in the buildings and in the, in the, in the, um, uh, in, in the houses of people, 140, 100, between 100 and 140 families, and then we try to put in common that, evaluating it from social and environmentally uh, point of view. So we see the social and environmental impact and we see that creating this platform we can uh, encourage people to change 
their behavior, their attitude towards the environment, and, and also we try to uh, um, increase the possibility for young people to um, uh, incorporate into the, into the labor market. So that is uh, so and so that is the, the, main, the main idea. Thanks a lot. We have now Lina Glenkate with two projects. The first one is Social Network for Intergenerational Dialogue, and the second one, I European Living Lab for CSR.
problem solutions and real problems at the same time engaging like workers, common citizens to provide solutions by offering um, at least symbolic reward system and through the competition. So this way like the best solutions to the real problems could get could get be awarded, right? So the very the objective would be to share experiences of the development and implementation of corporate social responsibility strategies in Europe while while generating new knowledge and awareness. Um, as I said, uh, living lab methodology for data management and cooperation of knowledge. So, as I said, this is very brief and anyone interested, I can explain better both ideas. Thank you. For the next project, Scrap Energy, Living Outsiders, Inside the Storytelling and Utopia. If you have the slides, please provide them. No, 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 no. I mean, now we, we are going to have crowd, the smart crowd incubation from Hendrix and Arnett. Yeah, if, if, if someone needs a... Okay, I'm sorry for the uh, confusion with the slides. And since I will have three minutes, I'm going to start from here. Um, I'm from, from Goteo. Uh, we are a crowdfunding platform which is open source. We are a non profit foundation. I have been working on a proposal during the last months trying to, to, to have a, a more uh, complete uh, a continuous circle of uh, giving uh, resources, but also uh, giving uh, tools for generating impact to different communities <coughs> of practice. So our experience during these last three years with crowdfunding, as well as the experience from other partners we are uh, working right now in this proposal, is trying to bring uh, to specific communities a complete set of incubation based on the idea of the crowd, and based on the idea of social participation and from civil society, in different steps uh, in three very specific uh, communities of practice. Uh, it's a very modular approach that I would like to, to share with you if you're interested with, with more details that basically is trying to address three steps into the uh, generation of uh, new projects or the improvement of new tools and new ways of generating value uh, in, in different communities. I will explain these three communities uh, to after this. Secondly, uh, the way they can get uh, funding and resources in order to improve what they're doing or generate new tools. That's where the uh, crowdfunding element uh, comes into, into action and where I was also addressing this question uh, uh, with the spirit of chest and, and other mechanisms for getting these resources to, to get to communities. 
And finally, as a third step, the way uh, this uh, co-ideated uh, or co-created uh, projects, as well as crowdfunded projects, have to uh, address production itself. How this has to relate again to the crowd and to people being aware of what's been developed with their ideas and also their own money. So there's a, a third element or a third module that addresses agile and different ways of generating uh, uh, services and products and new tools with uh, the implication of citizens and people. And a transversal module which is precisely relating to the data that this can generate and the understanding of what goes, what goes on with these three steps of development. Basically, we are addressing uh, three types of community. One relates to um, uh, the collaborative economy, and uh, in this aspect, we are very interested in, in confirming uh, participation from people like WeShare, which are very much aware of, of new uh, uh, strategies for generation, generating uh, collaborative economy um, products and services. Secondly, uh, um, we are also very much interested in open data and open knowledge communities. This kind of uh, development process we think makes a lot or even more sense when we talk about uh, project generating open data and open knowledge in local communities. And uh, I think we are lucky there's been quite a lot of, of this in recent years uh, in different European countries. And the third one is more related to cultural domain and we are interested in the intersection between music and the Internet of Things. Or digital devices as well as um, uh, music and expressions of, of music uh, culture. Th those will be the three uh, communities where we are addressing this and just a, a very <coughs> short um, uh, comment on the three modules again. Uh, for this one we think methodologies are, are, are the key aspect so we are working very much not only the digital tools for that but the current steps you need to take and we have also some expertise there for uh, making sure that you are co-creating something with people and not just uh, using co-creation as a good word or as a kind of spiritual or, or, or aiming. Uh, no, no, you need specific tools, specific materials, methodologies, etc. for this. Uh, for the second one, um, uh, I mentioned match funding because it's also in our experience what makes the best out of crowdfunding when it's related to uh, open projects and to social impact. So people is giving this kind of second layer of uh, confirmation that this is interesting, not uh, only following uh, money from an institution, but also uh, making sure that the projects that get the money are also backed by people and you know, what they can help them with uh, small amounts of money. We, we think and we consider this one of the virtues of, of crowdfunding model when it comes to uh, making people also uh, both with their money and, and with the resources they have. And finally, when I was mentioning these words like Agile or, or, or Lean, that this, this morning there were also some projects mentioning that in the development process. We think this paradigm that comes, uh, like many other ones, from the development of the open source development world and, and from technical uh, areas, it it's, has to do with uh, being uh, able to explain technical things in, with a common language has to do with making sure that the end user is really using what you build and those principles we think are, are very important when you address also uh, having social impact. So people have to double check and people have to be part of the testing process of whatever you do with this kind of uh, approach to, to developing new tools and services. And finally, uh, well, that's probably a transversal need of every project that it's publicly, publicly funded. You need to make sure that there's an observation process which goes through the whole way of, of doing these things. So you generate open data, you work with it, and you generate also indicators in this kind of case of more innovative or, or experimental or, or new approaches to, to co-creation and, and co-development. So unless that's the very much uh, summarized version of what we want to do. Thanks a lot. Now, Crowd Energy, please. With Ruth Borges.
bytes, but I will try to do my best. I will present the crow energy projects, consuming energy more sensible and sustainable using the width of, of crow. Uh, the main objective of the project is to accelerate the change from a decentralized uh, production of energy model to a decentralized production model. Uh, in order to do that, we will try to address or, or try to provide a technology methodology solution for free of those problems, free of the problem that uh, don't uh, that could easily the, the transition. So the first problem we want to, to address is to connect people that have this uh, that wanted to, to change their energy production. That wanted to be energy uh, providers or energy independent. Okay? So we wanted to create some sort of platform to share the ideas or solution or, 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 or uh, models to themselves. To, 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 to okay, the, the second objective is to is is already related to this one is to create a platform where people could co-create solutions for themselves. It's like I uh, I already know how to make some sort of uh, special uh, ice, uh, ice lamp of the walls, or I will have some tricks to improve the energy efficiency of my uh, heat system, or I have a solution for my uh, lighting system that helps to reduce my consumption and improve my energy efficiency in my house. And we want to uh, help spread that, that uh, knowledge among all the people that want to a solution. And the, the, the third one is more a long term objective, is to easy the interconnection of people that already have this type of solution. They are producing their own energy and they wanted to share that with other people in order to, to help them uh, between them and uh, be more sustainable. Uh, now we are already involved an ICT partner and an energy cooperative. Are in relative big energy cooperative. Uh, we are currently looking for expert in human behavior in order to uh, design uh, design a product that will help uh, to engage more of the people that are in the in, in the cooperative. And we wanted to involve also expert in European laws because well, the sharing of uh, information is in this sector. Uh, has already that in, the, in the presentation. Uh, we are also very happy to integrate the other energy cooperatives from, from other countries. Our uh, hackers are not to, to bring their ideas for universal Thanks a lot. Now we have Learning Outsiders, a project on home education. By Simon Goff. Hello. Um, so I haven't got any slides, and I uh, also wasn't planning on doing anything here today. Uh, and I'm also not planning on doing anything to do with my work. Um, I actually kind of got here today, and there's a, a project that I've been working on for a couple of years, which is to do with um, education. Um, a couple of years ago, uh, we did a workshop um, at Mozilla uh, in London. We have a platform uh, called Open Badges. Has anybody heard of Open Badges? So, a few people. Open Badges are kind of a way of um, children or adults being able to demonstrate their learning. Um, it's a kind of technical platform, but it's kind of very open, uh, anybody can use them. And there's all these little bits around um, of educational things, of learning things uh, for children who want to kind of go out and do their own projects and do their own things. But there's a lot of problem with the platforms that exist, um, I think, in this kind of area. There's a platform, for instance, called DIY.org, uh, which is a platform for children to kind of demonstrate how they've made stuff and discuss the things they've made and, and all this kind of thing. This is all great, but 
there's a huge opportunity in trying to work out how to create some more decentralized uh, platforms for children who want to learn, and particularly children who don't go to school. Um, and this is something I'm particularly interested in. Um, my kind of, so, so the main objective here is basically to make every single child and encourage them to not go to school again. Um, and to kind of work out how to use decentralized platforms rather than one kind of central resource for children to be able to share their learning, to discuss their learning, and to work in kind of local areas, but also to work from area to area. Um, so it's actually quite an, an interesting challenge because it's trying not to create a platform. Uh, I'm very interested in the projects that I've heard around today, the kind of democracy projects, on how to look at decentralized things, the decentralized architecture of things. And I think this would be a great thing to apply um, to a kind of a learning environment where children are naturally driven by their own passions to learn things and where that passion can spread among groups of children. Uh, and I think what we're missing at the moment is a way to actually allow that to spread in a way where the children can lead on that particular thing. Um, so I'm interested in just talking about that. Uh, I've got lots of insights from personal experience and projects that we've done around this project. And so if anybody's interested in talking about that and some of the ways that that could move forward, then please join me as I've got my slide, and that's, that's kind of it. So uh, that's it. We have now inside historically from David uh, Frolich. Hi everyone. Um, so my name is uh, David Froelich. I'm uh, Director of Digital World Research Centre at the University of Surrey. And we sit in the School of Arts, in the Faculty of Arts and Human Sciences there. Um, our group does user-centred innovation in digital media systems. And this project sort of brings together two strands of previous work, which give you an idea of the kind of things we're interested in. Uh, one is that we have developed an open source uh, Android toolkit for mobile digital storytelling. So it allows you to string together audio, photo, and narratives on a, on a mobile phone and pull those in a community repository. And we've been developing that in India and South Africa where uh, literacy rates are very low in the rural areas and people can't communicate uh, very easily over distance except in audio visual form. And that's what our toolkit does. Um, and the other line of work is to explore the role of community journalism in design. And we've developed something called insight journalism, where a journalistic process is used as a front end to a, to a design activity. Um, and then it's, it stays in place to critique that design activity as it plays out in the community. And it fits very much with a found out kind of approach. Um, this project brings the two together in something I'm calling insight storytelling. And we apply it, or we want to apply it, in the urban design area. Um, and in particular, the reuse of buildings. Uh, societally, it tackles the problem of overpopulation and urbanization of uh, the world. And the pressure that that's going to put on cities for um, new developments and building. Um, and we'd like to basically create uh, a way of communities telling stories as a lingua franca, if you like, about the buildings and spaces in their area and feeding that into an urban design process because we believe that urban design isn't very participatory nowadays. <clears throat> um, in fact, I think it's broken. 
often communities are put in the position of reacting to what developers propose with local councils, and uh, it's not very proactive from the point of uh, community members. Um, so we, we are thinking of a process whereby communities are invited to create and uh, map an area with stories of the past, present and future. Uh, I won't go through this whole uh, rainbow, but we imagine there might be different types of stories that communities could tell about their areas, um, ranging from historical accounts of how people used to live in the past here, um, through to use stories of how the buildings or spaces work or don't work, the kind of problems they have, um, through to fictional stories of how people would like to live in the future. Um, and the designers themselves might start to use these storytelling tools to justify develop designs. So it has something called design stories, where professional architects or planners can um, tell uh, fictional stories of how people are supposed to live in these places. Um, and on a technological level, we'd like to extend our uh, Android toolkit to uh, basically optimize the creation of these stories of different types, maybe with different templates, uh, in that will come story, um, to provide a kind of story network browser for planners and architects and other stakeholders, communities themselves, to view um, the sort of meanings that people assign to their environments through the story layers, um, and maybe even to curate public debate and consultation around the stories. Um, that's the basic idea. Maybe it does or it doesn't fit with the CAPS program, but um, we, we hope it might. So come and talk to me if, you, uh, if you'd like to. Thanks, Anna. And now we have Utopia from Eric Joseph. Good afternoon. I will be very, I will try to be very fast and uh, uh, maybe you'll think that we are very far from the topics today, but uh, I will explain why I'm here today. So Utopia is a magazine, it's a web magazine uh, created by uh, four publishers um, last April uh, for European publishers. Uh, because we, we thought that it was necessary to, to create a, a, a place to discuss fundamental questions uh, for Europeans. And so the four publishers are uh, Galaxia Gutenberg in, uh, in Spain, uh, Fischer Verlag in, uh, in Germany, La Terza in Italy, and uh, Soy in France. And we have uh, three uh, academic partners, who, uh, which are London School of Economics, uh, Sciences Po in Paris, and Visite in uh, in, uh, uh, in Berlin. So, so here it is the front page of Utopia. So we publish quite uh, 15 articles, contribution uh, a month. And uh, as you 
could say we what we publish, we publish past and present issues, uh, what we think relevant for Europe. We, uh, for instance, about uh, democracy, we think in democracy in Europe, um, about uh, migration uh, policy in Europe, and so on. And uh, we publish uh, article contribution by intellectual scholars and exports, politics, social studies, uh, economics, culture, and history. And uh, all the all the articles are in the language of the of the authors and translated in uh, in English. So till now the, the the common language is English, and maybe in the future we'll try to to translate in several um, several uh, languages. Uh, the reader can come in, comment and, and uh, follow uh, follow us in um, Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube, and uh, among our, our authors, as you can see, uh, Zidane Bauman, which is quite a good father of uh, of Utopia, uh, Pamuk, uh, Atkinson, Salater, Zilonka. Our contents, um, as, you, as I said, uh, it's. The, the website is divided into three parts. First part is the, the big issues that uh, every two months uh, we focus on, uh, on big issues like uh, European cities and, and frontiers. The second part is uh, speaker's corner where uh, quite, we, we try to, to, to make uh, hard, tough debate. And the third part is, um, is much historical and cultural which is uh, what are the, the big dates for the turning points for all the Europeans, the theatres of memories, and what are the, the main, um, the main um, uh, speech also about in Europe. So in numbers, uh, so we have been launched, we have launched uh, in Tokyo on the, in April. We have uh, more than two, two, 2020 uh, 225,000 uh, page views and uh, more than uh, 50,000 unique visitors and the average session is uh, quite three minutes. And uh, in the press we speak about us in La Repubblica, with democracy, uh, BBC News. Uh, and so what we want to really try to create a, a, a European uh, public opinion. And uh, what, why I'm here? It's because I need, I need you, I, I need you to try to uh, change our a kind of discussion. We are still, I think, uh, in a in a vertical communication. I mean that uh, uh, when we publish article, we we, we announce it through uh, social networks, traditional social networks, for Facebook, Twitter, and so on. So we like to. To, to find new way, new uh, uh, new new roads to 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 speak with uh, with readers and all, and and also to develop a platform and to create much more debate with with our readers and that's why it's necessary to find new ways and uh, maybe it's through your your help. Uh, city partners to help us, so it's uh, we're looking forward to disseminate YouTube, YouTube uh, con uh, content and uh, make it to be more interactive and user friendly and innovative. We really want to, to because we publish uh, very sometimes very tough articles. Uh, when I say tough, not, not because it's difficult, because we are very aware that uh, it's necessary to be uh, very open uh, to, to the reader, but. Uh, of course, it's quite sometimes difficult to speak uh, about an article about Bauman and uh, Zidon Kao Salater. So people, readers are a little bit afraid. So we want to find a place, a way to, uh, to provoke the debate with, um, with the readers. So that's why I came today to meet you. Thank you very much. Thanks a lot. Unless someone else wants to do a presentation, that was the last presentation today. But now we have, a, well, I have an announcement to make, and after I will explain how the open space works. The announcement is that uh, from Distributed Value, we are organizing a workshop on distributed platforms for peer production in London in March 16, 17. 
It's called Floss for Peer to Peer. So if anyone is interested, you are all invited. It will have somehow a technical failure because we will invite people from developing technical infrastructure that is open source and distributed, but especially focus on deep production. In London, March 16, 17, I mean, you can go to p2pvalue.eu for more information. And uh, concerning what we are, we can have and we continue today, now we have uh, nine projects and eight people that have showed us their ideas. And the idea is that now we will split in groups. So here we will have the first three, and after the order, the six will be in different corners of the lab lab. So in each place, I mean, I will show where each one can be. But for example, Enric can be in one corner there. And whoever is interested in Enrique's idea would approach to him and talk, and talk with him about it, okay? Forming a group of people interested on the idea that Enrique is talking. The idea is that you don't need to stick, in this half an hour, you don't need to stick to one group. You can feel free and move if you are not finding it interesting enough. You've got a solution for the question that you have or whatever. So you can move from a, a group to a group. And if you are one idea proposer and no one comes to you, maybe this was not the appropriate context for your idea, which is fine. So you can be joining another group. Um, and if you are just two or three, it's fine. The, the idea proposers are moderating the discussion. And if you can, uh, if you have some interesting insights or something like that, it would be good to write them in the pad of this session. A pad is a collaborative document that is online. So if someone can take notes or whatever you discuss, if there is something that you decide to be taken. Uh, and that's all. Okay. So we have Usela Sustainable Law of an area that could be here, please. So we will have that here. And Lina Kelke? Yeah, okay. So anyone interested in the two projects of Lina can go there. And the others, please, we need to go. Good luck, 